see the, the cows or something, bud? Yeah, the weather here on the app actually says it's going to rain all day. Really? That's pretty rare, actually. A full day of rain in Arizona. I feel like it's nice when it does. Yeah, the hourly, it just keeps going and going and going. Even all night. Really? We've actually had a ton of rain since we've been in Arizona, which is kind of typical for wintertime in the desert, but... To be honest, we were hoping for more sunshine because we were running from that New York winter that we had to spend all of November and all of December in. We were really hoping for some just endless sunny days. I know they're coming in the future and all in all, it does feel really cozy to have a rainy day out at one of these camp spots and having all these windows on the shuttle bus makes it extra cozy because we open all the windows and you can watch the rain coming down. I really do love the windows in this bus. It's pretty cold out today too, so we did turn our heater on and our heater has that fireplace front. You just, you can't beat that. Potato's ready to take a nap. That's what he's ready for. I could barely get this guy out of bed this morning. Big nap guy. Big nap guy. bean coffee so I had to get already ground just watching a pot of water boil it's going pretty good
How did you sleep last night? <sighs> like a half a million ducks. Only a half? Yeah. Not too bad though. It's kind of nice. I'm pretty worn out still from the last several months, so I'm happy to kind of stay inside, read a book, and play a game or something. Mm -hmm. Hopefully take a nap. Um, I think I'm going to do some tea. Yeah. Oh, I got you. <laughs> Mateo's concerned. You want to put this one on the lowest setting you'll possibly go? I know how to make the coffee. Okay. Well, sometimes you put it on a higher setting than it needs out. to be slightly higher than the lowest setting. Look, I'm just trying to ensure that you have the best cup of coffee possible. You know what? <laughs> just there's room for one cook in the kitchen, okay? <laughs> one brewmaster barista in the kitchen. What's outside? Is it a cow? Is there a cow out there? They just came out of the oven. Steaming. Ooh. That's what you're looking for. It looks so warm. It smells really good after the rain out here. Oh, outside? Yeah. It smells so good. I love that smell. The Sonoran doesn't smell. Maybe it's because I'm from the East Coast, but I love a good dreary day. I only like it when we're here. I hate it when it's like this back home because it is like that often and it lasts and you can't do anything. I can even appreciate it back in New York. Some days, once it gets to be full on winter, it's too much. Mm -hmm. It's too much of it. But uh, I, I can get down with a gray, rainy day. My fingertips are all purple. Yeah, too many blueberries. Basically, if you don't have to leave within the next day or two, it's usually fine, but if you Say it started pouring and we had to leave tomorrow. We have to be aware yeah. of the road a lot more. Almost got the van stuck the one time. Yeah. yeah, but I got it out. That was probably like 2018. <laughs> Most people that just started watching the channel saw our bus get stuck last year. But, oh man, there's a lot that came before that. <laughs> the van got stuck in the mud a few times. Got it out a few times as well. Getting down this road like, so fast, like left way too fast. Right. Around the cactus, split the two cactuses, which is gonna be. <sighs> what a strange journey it's been. <laughs> That's kind of the fun of it. Yes. Cheers. Thanks for making me <laughs> coffee. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm meant to have a brand new vehicle. No. <laughs> We're way too hard on things. 
way too hard on things. Yeah. Have you seen how we got stuck in the mud and like... You're a funny guy. I've been rereading The Prophet the last few weeks, and if you've never heard of this book, I highly, highly recommend it. It has some really good reminders for just life in general and as I was rereading it I came across this passage and it just really kind of hit me in a way that I knew was important. You can just feel it when you encounter a message that you probably need, that some piece of you needed to hear. It says, your joy is your sorrow unmasked and the self-same well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? Is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. I love this section of the book because it's suggesting that you can only know the greatest depths of joy if you have experienced the deepest sorrows, that the hollowness carved out by sorrow can then in the future be filled with joy and you can then feel so much more joy in your life because you have known the bad and I think that's just a really beautiful sentiment. I think a lot of the times, at least for me, I can get really bitter about the negative things that I've experienced in life and the traumas that I've had but I think it's a beautiful thing to turn that around and think of the pain as a space that can now be filled with the wonderful, joyous, beautiful, colorful parts of life. I just think that's a message that I was really needing to hear and I hope that maybe some of you were needing to hear that too. You coming out with me? Um, I'll probably stand on the doorway. Oh, it feels so good though. It's not pouring. Oh, it's a cool, smoky closet there.
A big rainstorm in the desert means we won't be able to move camp for a few days, but we really don't mind. We're fortunate to have such a comfortable space to ride out the storm and watch the desert come back to life in the coming days. It's times like these we really appreciate this house we built and all the places we can take it. This time we have allows us to slow down and find a more natural pace. We've learned more about ourselves in the stillness than we ever did in the never-ending distraction of this modern world we've built. Time is the greatest resource we have. This is how we intend to use ours. <laughs>